Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Families Empowered Meet Schools Live. Uh, I am. My name is Ayla. I am back again here with an awesome school in San Antonio that I'm really excited to talk about. Um, Franco Madla Early College High School. We've got a couple of guests here today. I'm super excited to have Mr. Flores, our principal, and Sierra, a former student. She's our first student that we've had on one of these, so I'm really excited to get her perspective and talk about the school from a student's point of view. It's super unique. It'll be really interesting. Uh, just a reminder, um, as we launch into everything, uh, we do have an awesome prize today. If you'd like to ask a question, just say hello. You'll be entered for a chance to win a little gift card from the burger joint. So without further ado, so that we can get into some great questions. Mr. Flores, tell us about yourself. Well, good morning. Thanks for having us on here. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a product of San Antonio, of uh, the South Side of uh, San Antonio, I uh, went to public school here and high school, uh, went off to Arreda Lake University, got a couple degrees from there. Uh, I've been in education. This is my, I just finished my 28th year in education. Uh, and it was the, uh, the most amazing year, interesting year to say the least, this, this, uh, <laughs> this last academic year. Uh, but I've worked in all areas of education uh, from, from uh, teaching, special ed to um, area, uh, administration, coaching, the whole, the whole gamut of it, uh, and I find that my uh, my niche, my spot is being in the in the high school setting, and I love being a high school principal. Awesome, Sierra, tell us about yourself, a former student. Where are you now? Um, hi, I'm Sierra Garcia. Um, I'm a former student of St. Thomas Early College High School. I graduated in 2018. And I'm finishing my bachelor's of science and psychology at a and San Antonio. Congratulations. When are, you, when are you finishing? When are you graduating? Um, I'll be done by August 15th. Awesome. Congratulations. The class of, class of 2020 here. I'm sure it's been an interesting year for you, too. Yes, it has. <laughs> So let's launch into it. Um, Mr. Flores, let's start with um, talking about just the school in general. Tell me about the mission of the school and what grade levels y'all offer. So, so Franco Amanda Ernie College High School is part of New Frontiers Public Schools. Uh, our high school is in partnership with Palo Alto College, which is part of Alamo Colleges. Uh, it's important to note that Palo Alto Colleges is in the top 1% of community colleges in the country. Um, so. We are located on the campus of Palo Alto College, and we offer our students the opportunity to earn 60 college hours, uh, many of them their associate's degree while in high school. So what this means is our families are getting uh, two years of, of college, a head start. Uh, you just heard Sierra, she graduated high school in 2018. She's getting her BA two years later um, with, with everything, you know, the first two years totally covered. Um, our partnership between New Frontiers Public Schools and Alamo Colleges provides this for families at no cost. That is everything from tuition all the way down to the 25 cent Scantron sheet they may need for a test. Um, we do that to empower our community and, and hopefully they're, they're there to then give back to their community um, and, and support and move forward. We, we always tell our students that uh, they are here for a purpose, and they are on the shoulders of, of previous generations, and now it's their job to, to pay that forward. That's amazing. So, you know, before we talk about kind of how the school functioned this past year and what we're looking at for next year, I'd love to hear from you, Sierra, about your experience in the school and how it prepared you to graduate so quickly. Um, my experience being a Franco Modlo student um, it's, it's like a typical school setting, but the only difference is, uh, Franco Mabla is located on the junior college campus, Palo Alto College. Um, so a typical day in my experience was I would have some courses at the high school campus and <clears throat> towards the end of my high school career, um, my courses were all at the, at the college campus. And during that time, I was able to use resources such as the library, study room. Um, I'm able to use, I was able to use the writing center for help on essays or anything of that sort. Um, I mean, it was a pretty great experience. Um, it's unlike any other. And um, 
And just being an early college high school student really set the foundation that I needed to be successful within um, my bachelor's uh, program. And like Mr. Florida said, um, they want their students to be great. And like what we always had said throughout high school was that you're built for greatness. And I really think that Franco Monta Early College High School really just set that foundation and confidence within me um, as a student and as a leader to just really prove to myself and prove to others that um, with the right foundation, with the right support, um, you can achieve anything. So, yeah. That's amazing. I love it. Do you, you. I, you know, I'd love to hear from your perspective, you know, do you think that being on the Palo Alto campus helped prepare you to be on a real life college campus? Yeah, I think it really year? did. It. Yeah, it was definitely an eye opener. It's very different. Um, but I think it's a great experience because you get to, you're not limited to just the high school setting. And it's, preparing you for real life experiences that you're going to experience throughout your undergraduate program. And um, I think that's just a great early start because my first semester I started with just one class at the college campus. And, um, and I think just having that exposure to that type of environment was great for me and my learning because I got used to um, learning from college professors. I got used to working in different groups, meeting new people. Um, so, yeah. That's awesome. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. I love it. So let's talk a little bit about this past year, which I, you know, I think we all agreed that it was a little crazy, a little <laughs> bit hectic. Um, Mr. Flores, tell me a little bit about how y'all supported your students uh, throughout the pandemic and how y'all handled the virtual learning aspect of things. Sure. As you mentioned, it, it was it, it was a totally different situation. Uh, like most schools, we left for spring break. We told our kids, we'll see you guys in a week. Have fun. Enjoy it. Uh, and then we never came back to the campus. Um, luckily, though, we use a learning management system uh, called Schoology. So our students, throughout, they've already been, they've been, um, our communication with parents is through Schoology. So all their coursework is, on, is, is located uh, online, the grade books online. Um, our communication with parents and students is done through, through Schoology. So as we transition to um, more remote learning, uh, it was a it was still difficult that that challenge of, of, of transitioning over, but uh, we still had um, a great um, staff and teachers who had this already prepared on Schoology and students engaged on Schoology. So that transition was a little more seamless. Um, what we focused on was making sure our parents uh, and students were were engaged still. So we had weekly check ins with students. Uh, we had virtual. Um, town halls with the students or assemblies. Uh, every Friday, our teachers have, have homerooms or clusters. They checked in with those students. Uh, we had virtual um, uh, meetings with the kids. They would just hang out and talk with each other. Uh, we had a virtual um, scavenger hunt with the kids. But we really wanted to keep them engaged in the school setting and not only doing this on academics. Uh, we also wanted to help them on the social emotional side. Uh, so we kept checking in with students to make sure their needs were being met. Uh, students, our families who needed technology were given uh, laptops, were given hotspots. Uh, we wanted to make sure these students had no excuses or no reason not to be successful. In addition to that, our students who were follow Alto college students uh, also had access to everything follow Alto provided. So that was additional um, uh, computers, the computers or hotspots as well. So we checked in with our students weekly on this, uh, some more than others. Uh, and we really want to make sure that um, the students remember that we were there for them and that we continue to, to lead during this transition with, with heart, with mercy and with grace as these students kept in this trend, in this, this whole new learning process. Um, luckily, um, we were blessed to have 100% of our students were in contact with us over this transition. So we were able to capture all of our kids to make sure they were engaged. Some still struggled with the online learning because um, it was a transition, but we, we were there for them. We have great teachers who were doing additional tutoring after hours on Zoom. Um, teachers use different platforms to make sure the kids were engaged with them. Um, so that was our focus during this transition. And um, even though it was challenging, we had a lot of success with it. 
Awesome. That's fantastic. You know, I'm so curious to know how, you know, and what resources from the Palo Alto campus that students still have access to throughout. And then does that also, you know, transition into the summer? How are you guys handling any like potential learning loss that kind of happened that, you know, to prepare kids for next year? Yes, great question. So Palo Alto provided students who needed a laptop. They could just bring their college ID and their and their state ID and they got a laptop. Uh, we had hotspots throughout the college setting. So they would go to the parking lot, pull in there. There were hotspots available. Um, earlier, so you're talking about being in the college campus. Um, one of our strengths is the power of placement. We're on the college campus. But in addition to that, uh, we use an immersion model. So our students are uh, in college classes with other traditional college students. So they have everything available to them that Palo Alto provides to everyone. So our students had that technology available. Uh, professors were available to them. They had online tutoring sessions, one-on-one, -on -one, uh, our group sessions, our additional software that our students were provided to Alamo College and the Palo Alto College to, to remain successful. That's amazing. That's, that's so yeah. cool. That's so great. So I want to talk a little bit about um, what we're looking at for next year. So when's the first day of school? First day of school is July 19th. It's Got a it. sorry, August 19th. I'm sorry, August 19th. August 19th. Yeah, it, is a, it is a Wednesday. Got it. So, um, you know, you talked a lot about how the school is an immersion model. Kids are in classes with real college students, um, they're getting the full experience. Uh, I wanna know what that looks like, what a typical day looks like. And I'd love to hear um, both from you, Mr. Flores, but also from Sierra, who was there and did it herself. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, you know, we always tell our families, we have we have traditional kids. We have kids that, are, that look like every other high school kid in the in the country. Uh, the difference is they do, they do extraordinary things. Um, given the opportunity and the structure and, and, and the support we provide for them, the college the college classes are eased into. So all of our students must pass the TSI test, and that's their their college acceptance test. Once they meet those requirements, we look at that their social emotional um, setting. We look at their attendance. We look at their grades, and then we, if we feel it's a good spot, we put them in college courses. We ease into that. Um, freshman year. We, we double up with our core classes. So they have a double shot of algebra, well, math, science, English that's in there. That's to give them a strong framework. Our model, um, we look at the big picture in our success of our students. So as we come in, no matter where they come from, our application process is pretty simple. If, if you wanna to come to our school and you pass the eighth grade, you're in. There's no entrance test, there's no essay, there's no interview, um, we'll, we'll, we'll help you get into where you want to do. Well, we always tell the kids, if you have the ganas or the guts to do it, the grit to do it, we'll get you there. Um, once we do that, we, we support them academically with academic labs, um, support centers throughout the day. Um, so on a typical day when they're in college courses, it's pretty amazing. You'll see our students go, let's say they may have first period at the college campus, have to walk back to our campus for second period, third period, they may go to the to the Starbucks for lunch uh, on the college campus, and they come back for a high school class. So they they actually live within two worlds. They're they're in a high school setting, but also going to the college setting back and forth. Um, now that does change how we teach at the high school level, because these are college students. They're again they're in a college class. They're having debates, discussion. Uh, they're having a point with other discuss you know process and, and thoughts with other college students. When they come back to the high school, we have to keep that same teaching going for them. So, so, so with our school, it's a lot of reading, writing, and thinking that happens in those classrooms. Um, but our students have to make that adjustment um, academically and emotionally and socially in going from high school to college, back to high school, back to college. Now, by senior year, they're almost 100% at the college level. But, you know, but Sierra would tell you first, I mean, she, she lived it. We, we do the schedule, we write it up, uh, but they <laughs> have to go through it every day. <laughs> yeah, Sierra, tell, tell me what, about a typical day for you. How, how did that work? Um, I mean, like Mr. Florida said, um, I was eased into it as a freshman and a sophomore. I only started out with one or two classes, college courses. Um, 
and I would have other classes at the high school and then within other periods I would have classes at the college campus um, and as the years progressed um, all of my courses were at the college level so I was constantly going from high school to the college campus high school to college campus back and forth um, and the adjustment you get used to it over time where it's you, the social adjustment, the emotional adjustment, adjustment. Um, but a typical day was just learning and thinking critically and being pushed to your limits, not only by your college professors, but also by the high school teachers as well. Um, because like Mr. Florida said, we have to keep that um, continuum of learning just so that way it's not so much of a big shock, like, oh, or some students may feel, that way students don't feel like, they're learning more at the college, but not at the high school. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, that was my typical day. And, and, if, and if I can add, what we, what we have to look at is, we always make sure our students understand they're always gonna be ahead. So mm -hmm. we have to prepare them when they're, like when, when Sierra graduated high school, even though her, her, her grade group of friends were going into the freshman year of college, she was going straight into junior level courses at the university. So we have to prepare them for that. So our big picture, when they come in as freshmen, we're not, I mean, yes, they go to the STAR test. I mean, that's, an, that's a test the state has us give kids and we look at that, but we're looking at how do we make sure this is gonna be successful in college algebra by at least their senior year, most by their junior year. Um, when it comes to English and reading and you know writing, how do we make sure that they're ready to write at the college level by their sophomore year of high school? So our, our scope and sequence is, is a little bit um, on, the faster, on a faster pace, but it's the rigor we have to get these students used to uh, on that so they are successful uh, because they're true college students. So when, when Sierra got her grades back, um, she got them back. Not mom, not dad. Uh, we got the midterm grade and the final grade. Uh, they had to take on that responsibility. So early on, they take on a responsibility that's important for them to be successful for their entire life. They have to balance, you know, they have to balance out when a professor says classes, you know, is done 30 minutes in. They have to come back and balance that time. So we have to, we help them get, that, uh, along with academics, we help them be successful in teaching in them soft, those soft skills of time management, of, of empathy, of, of, you know, social, emotional uh, uh, support them on how to handle stress, um, you know, all of them, because these are high school kids, they, they do the regular high school stuff in addition to now they're college kids. So you know, finals time, they're taking high school finals, they are, I'm sorry, college finals, then high school finals. Wow. Um, also, just to add to that, um, like how he said about time management, there were some courses that I had that would finish early and I had to learn that responsibility of, well, I have 30 minutes left before my next class. What am I going to do with this? Am I going to sit around and waste the time? Or am I going to study for an upcoming test? Am I going to get ahead on a, reading a textbook? Am I going to um, go meet with my professor for a quick question? Am I going to meet with uh, our school counselor for a question about a university. Am I going to apply for scholarships? Um, and just like he said, um, the rigor of it all really prepared me for the a university level. I love that. I, I think it's so cool and interesting the way that you guys are preparing kids to go right into college, um, right <laughs> into their junior year of college, because of course they're in college while they're in school while they're in uh, Spring Hill Mabla. <clears throat> but I'm really curious to hear, um, Sierra, from your point of view, what it was like to transition in from eighth grade into your freshman year. What was your first year like? So for all the families that are looking at the school <laughs> potentially for their you know, rising eighth graders, what can yeah. they expect that experience to be like for their kids? Um, I mean, for me, it was, um, it was a big cultural, social shock just because I had gone to school with the same kids from first grade all the way to eighth grade and completely moving to a new school with kids from all over the city was definitely different. Um, 
But I think freshman year, it was definitely a year of growth for me, um, just getting situated in the environment, making new friends, making those new bonds with people. Um, and I think what other families and parents should expect is just um, for for a little growth within their kids and just to be patient with them if they're not sure about it or or if they don't feel that it's right. Um, but it's definitely worth it transitioning from eighth grade to a college high school. Awesome. Mr. Flores, I'd love to hear, you know, from the school side, how do you guys support those incoming eighth graders that are kind of experiencing that culture shock? Yeah, so we pull kids to all over the county and surrounding counties. Um, so we <clears throat> spend a lot of time uh, that freshman year and, and, and all four years, but the freshman year of developing that that community um, and, and the culture of, 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 of Franco Mallet Early College High School, we, we have our own kind of um, language there. We, we talk to our kids every day about they're, they're built for greatness. Uh, they're, we always tell them that our job is to help them find their greatness and then help them walk in that greatness every single day. Uh, we talk to them about, you know, giving a perfect effort in everything that they do academically at home to give that perfect effort. Um, we're, we're a different school in that we, we let our kids know that we love them, um, that, that we're there for them. They have a voice. We're there to support them, uh, that they matter. Um, so we spend a lot of time with our students, um, also reminding them that they're going to face some struggles. Um, we're, these kids are amazing um, on the fact that they're choosing to come to a school where we're going to put six years of school in four years. Um, so we remind them that it is going to be a struggle, but they can do this. We're there to support them. And we develop a system where the students support each other. Um, it's amazing to see students lead uh, study sessions. Uh, we have uh, a, a tutoring group that are upperclassmen help with low, underclassmen classes and, and tutor the students in those areas. Uh, we have alumni come back and talk to the students about what it takes uh, to meet in the school they want to go to, uh, to remind them, that, or they tell them, you know, this is worth it. You know, it's going to help you when you finish, when you finish this program, look where, I'm, look where I'm at now, look what I'm doing now. You can do the same thing. Um, we also have um, uh, Madla milestones so that, that we support our students and remind them and our community what they're doing. So just quickly, when, when the students choose our school, we have a pinning ceremony where they get a pin where it's a, it's a ceremony where the students, the parents and the faculty all make a commitment to the, to the next four years of our students and the parent pins uh, the, the student. Uh, when they get to to college courses, they get a college um, a college ready um, uh, journal on the mind milestone. We've our parents to this. We get that milestone to start writing down that journey that's there. Uh, we don't have athletics at the school, even though our students can participate uh, at, at the college level. And we've had some kids play soccer and volleyball and basketball for Palo Alto College because they are college students. But at 15 hours, our students earn the Letterman jacket. Uh, we're in Texas. Every kid wants. A Letterman jacket. Uh, ours is a <laughs> black with a with a, a, a teal M on it. It's beautiful. Uh, it's it's hot though. It's heavy. Uh, but uh, when our kids earn 15 college hours, they earn a Letterman uh, from the school. Um, and then we, we we celebrate again at 45 hours. We get the core 45. And then at graduation, uh, there's a ceremony and a dinner. We honor the the students and their parents. And it comes full circle. Freshman year. The, the parent pinned the the student. Senior year, the student gives the parent a a a sarape stole um, from the from the student's point of view, thanking the parents for their support over these last four years. So at graduation, you will see um, throughout the throughout the auditorium, parents with that sarape that shows that that's the parent of a graduate. So we how we support our students at freshman year is we give them a foundation knowing that we're there for them, we're gonna support them while, while we challenge them academically. Um, at the same time, it's a journey all four years and we're there with them. Uh, we always let the parents know, I'm a father myself of, of, of three kids, uh, 12, 14 and 16. Um, so I, I, I noticed firsthand, when kids come to high school, they're gonna trip sometimes. Our, our commitment is they're never gonna fall. 
They're going to trip. We're going to get them back on track, put them back in that spot, always reminding them what their end goal is. And we're all, and we're all in this together to have them meet that goal. Wow. That's amazing. I, I'm curious to know, so we talk about, you know, all four years and how students are really prepared to go into the college classes as they, you know, move through the, the program, the academic program. Um, what grades are available for kids to enroll in today? And is this, you know, is it, does the school work best for kids coming in hot off of eighth grade? Can they come in in 10th grade and succeed? How, how does that work for families? Sure. So, so our, our MOU with the state and with, with, with Alamo colleges is we, we are, we always take in ninth and 10th graders. Uh, by 11th grade year, it's real difficult unless they're transferring in from another early college high school because of the rigor of the courses and the scope and sequence that's been, that's been in place. Um, sophomores come in, it's, it's not a big transition for them. It will limit their opportunity to get the full 60 hours. Uh, they can still do it, but it's a little bit more difficult with the timing of it. Uh, we always have spots for freshmen uh, to come in. Um, and again, our application is pretty simple. It, it's if you wanna come to high school, and you and you want to you know put if you want to put in in four years six years of school we're here for you uh, it's going to be it's going to be challenged all of our courses at the pap level the freshman year um but we take these freshmen in and and we want to make sure that that this is the right spot for them picking the right high school um is, is crucial for student success and that's why i think what you guys do in friends and power is, is important because that decision over whether you you're going to put your student the next four years is an important decision. Um, and we don't take that lightly. We really want to make sure that our spot, our school is the best fit for the students. So we're very transparent with what we do, how we do things. Um, and that's been very successful for us uh, because we want to make sure the kid is going to be successful. And we, and we partner with the parent as well as the student. So we're all on the same page. So right now we're taking ninth grade and tenth grade applications. Awesome. So how how can parents apply? Where do they need to go? Who do they need to talk to? Sure. So they could they could also they could always apply online. That's at www.newfrontierspublicschools.org. Um, there is an application on there. Um, they 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 click on the application link. They apply for the high school. They put in pretty simple. Are they going to be ninth or tenth graders? the application they then get from us a a, um, a conditional acceptance letter um, that says you're in we have a spot for you and the police submit back to us a letter of intent that they're going to enroll at our campus once we get that then we send a, then we send out for them the information for registration on there and it's and it's that it's that simple um, also they could always call the, the school number um, right now with COVID-19, the, the access to the campus is limited. So um, I'm, I would give up my, my work cell number. Uh, any parent can call me about, about um, questions on the school, um, questions, ideas, whatever it is. Uh, my, my work cell number is 210-452-1166. Um, they could also email me at uh, jflores at newfrontierspublicschools.org. Awesome. Yeah, that's been a huge question that we have gotten as parents are calling us for help is campuses are closed. I can't yeah. get in touch with everybody <laughs> with anyone. I'm trying to figure out who I need to talk to. So because I know the campus is closed, um, are you guys doing any type of virtual tours or tours by appointment with masks? Um, how are you handling that for parents who maybe want to come see it for themselves? So we are still working with, with Alamo Colleges, with Palo Alto College on, on, on seeing if we can schedule some one-on-one some -on -one tours with masks that are there. Um, we have sent out the map of the school. Um, we are on a, we're in a small corner of the, of the college campus. We're between the Ozuna Library uh, and the veterinary uh, building at, at the college campus. That's our portables there. Our tour would take 10 minutes because it's just portable classrooms that are in there. Um, but we, we are what we do a lot of time with is we spend time with parents who ask, you know, they're going to ask a lot of questions. Um, and I mentioned before, this is an important decision. So we meet with them one on one. Uh, one thing that COVID-19 has has kind of shown us that 
we could do a lot of things through to uh, through Zoom or our virtual meetings with parents, um, and we're doing that more because it, it's it's hard to make the connection um, with with a parent and a student just on a phone call. Um, so we're doing a lot more time doing one on one with them. Uh, we're in the process right now of planning uh, how well how we're going to do our summer bridge program. It's always been on campus. They come in for three days. All the freshmen come in. There's there's activities, academic as well as social. Um, we have to change that up uh, through through now because social distancing. Um, so we're still working on on that on on how we get that done. Great. So now I want to talk a little bit about the future going forward. Um, well, I'm curious to know, do you guys, I know you're talking about finishing up your summer program. Uh, how do you envision uh, this school year thing? Are you going to have a B day? Or, you know, are you doing part virtual, part in class? How how are you guys handling that for the school year? Do you, do you guys have concrete plans yet? We're, we're fun, as a district, we are still finalizing plans. Um, the one thing that is 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 helpful for us is that by using Schoology as a learning management system we have, it helps us have our students do a little bit of both. Um, they've always been able to, to log in and do work. Uh, we've had kids who have been extended absences because of as an illness who are still able to stay involved with it. Um, as they're in the college course, we, we do know, we do know from Alamo Colleges that the college courses will be online this fall, the majority of them. Um, so our students will have to still log in to get that work done. Uh, they will stay on the same schedule as, as they have always had at the college. So it'd be kind of what they're saying now is the synchronous model uh, that's there. Um, but we will still support our kids regardless of what that model is. Um, New Frontiers Public Schools is being very uh, pragmatic in how we're going to respond to this to make sure that the voice of our community is heard, our parents, uh, that there's, there is a, we want to make sure the parents and the students feel safe uh, at the campus. We want to make sure that everyone is in an environment where learning can happen. Um, we have seen that uh, firsthand, some students excel with remote learning and some students struggle uh, with that. Uh, so we're looking as a staff at the high school level what support mechanisms we have to increase to make to ensure that our students are successful at the college level as well as the high school level, um, and then how we empower parents to stay connected through this transition uh, where there's going to be limited face-to-face -face time. Um, I would expect that that the district um, come out with what what the day-to-day -day lo what looks like um, pretty soon uh, at the high school. Our our hours of operation for school. Eight, it is 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, we're, on a, we're on a block schedule. So there's an A, B, uh, Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday uh, schedule. Fridays is more uh, aligned to extended in-depth um, study as well as support uh, in place for students who are struggling or who want to get ahead in certain courses. Great. So, um, and then I just want to point out, since we know that the college is uh, doing online classes for the college courses, um, I assume that kids, again, will have access to bring in their college ID in and they can get a laptop, check out a laptop if they need one, use the hotspots, they'll have all that access for next semester as yes. well. Yes, in addition to that, you know, there, there are students. So our, our district has made a commitment um, to have that access to our students. So if they need technology, it, it's there for them. If they're hotspots for them. One thing that's amazing about New Frontiers Public Schools is, is our superintendent, um, Mr. Fernando Segura, um, when this first happened with, with COVID-19, one of the first meetings he had with, with us and leadership was, how do we make sure every kid has access to technology? Uh, and that was, this was just starting out. So <clears throat> it's a commitment of we want to provide our parents everything that they need for the student to be successful. Great. So, you know, we talked about what, what this next year brings for students coming in to the school, but Sierra, what's the next year have in store for you? You're graduating on August 15th. Mm -hmm. So what are your um, plans? What are your big plans? Um, my plans are to start my, start um, getting professional experience. Um, I'm not too sure yet as to where I'm going to get that professional experience yet. But um, once I have had maybe a year or two of 
professional experience. Um, then I'll start my uh, grad program, um, probably in clinical psychology, and start working on my way to um, obtaining my PhD. So yeah, that's amazing. What do you <laughs> want to do with that? Do you want to work with patients? Do you want to go teach at a school? What do you want to do? <laughs> um, I think I would want to teach at a school, but I know my main goal at the end of at all like my schooling is I want to open my own nonprofit um, that is geared towards kids who have mental disabilities such as dyslexia and to really just provide resources and um, resources and aid to kids who don't necessarily have all those resources they need to help with their learning um, since they have a learning disability such as, such as dyslexia. So yeah. That's amazing. That's a wonderful goal. I love to hear that. <laughs> Do you have your eye on any specific grad programs? Uh, say that again. Sorry. Do you have your eye on any grad programs? Um, not yet. Um, I was thinking about starting a grad program at Our Lady of the Lake University because it's a beautiful campus and I just love what it represents. Um, but um. As of right now, that's my only grad school program I've considered, um, but I still have more uh, research to do on those. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm, I'm trying to convince uh, Sierra to, to consider coming back to the high school to teach a little bit, to get some, some <laughs> experience that's there. She's, she, she's great in math, and, and uh, uh, she's, uh, we've seen her work before with, with other organizations in tutoring. Uh, and, and she's amazing at it. So we're trying to get her there, but you know, we'll see if it works or not. <laughs> uh, yeah, see if she wants to come back to school. Exactly. It. <laughs> so it seems like you've got such an engaged alumni network. I, you know, I love hearing Sierra's experiences. Why do you think that is? Why do you think your students love coming back and talking to you guys and supporting the school? Well, I, I think one of it is, for, for one, we, we, we're deliberate in, in making sure that we connect with every single student uh, that's there throughout their journey, um, through, through good times, through, through, the, through the mountaintops and also through the valleys that, that they may have. Uh, in addition to that, we stay engaged with them after graduation. Uh, we always tell the students that when they come into our school, you're gonna take six years of school in four years, but for us, it's a six year journey. Our goal is, is to make sure these students get to the four-year school that they want to attend, that their dream school is not the school they could afford, not the school that accepted them, where they want to go to school, and then we stay connected with them over their next two years. Um, so we still check up on them um, in how they're doing the classroom, how's, how's class going, uh, how's financial aid going. Uh, we have every December, we have an alumni breakfast. We invite all the alumni back and they come in and they take, you know, we buy for them breakfast. And, it, you know, the first idea was, you know, it'd be an hour. It's half a day normally. Uh, but we just spend time with our alumni as they come back. Uh, now some of our senior class visits with them during that time. Um, but like even right now when COVID-19 hit, uh, myself and our academic counselor, Mr. Zachariah, uh, we were contacting alumni uh, daily in how they were doing through this. We have students in, in Wisconsin and Arizona. Um, we were asking how, how, how are they doing? What help do they need during this time? Um, so it's an engagement that, that continues with them. Um, and, you know, it's important for us to, to, to demonstrate what we tell them we're going to do. If, we're, if we tell them we're here for them, if we tell them we're a community, we have to remain that community no matter where they go, no matter how long it's been. Um, so that that engagement is is a result of, of being deliberate in making sure that, that we stay connected with our students and that they know we're there for them no matter what. Perfect. So tell me quickly, I'd love to hear from you, Sierra. What would you say to a parent who's maybe watching this video and they're thinking about enrolling their student, what would you say to them? Um, I would say um, definitely enroll your student into the school because it's a great opportunity for them to grow, um, not only as an individual, but within their academics, within uh, professionalism. It's just, it's just a, like a well-rounded opportunity just for any person to grow. And the community at Franco Laba is, it's so tight. It's so, 
like well knit together that you're going to come out with not only your associates, not only with your high school diploma, but also with a family that loves and supports you through everything you do. And if there's anything that um, their child needs, um, Mr. Flores, Mr. Zachariah, or any of the teachers are more than willing to help them either achieve that goal or provide them with resources to um, help them get to that goal or to that end point. Um, I would just say it's uh, it's definitely a big change. It's definitely a big decision to make for a student. Um, but I think it's um, it's well deserved. It's it's just it's just a great experience overall. And I don't see why anyone wouldn't want to. Um, but of course, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. And Mr. Flores, can you share with us, you know, what you would say to prospective parents, maybe some questions that you think they should start asking when they come in to look at the school. And then also Ruby is hoping we can share again the first day of school. Oh, sure. So we, we are looking at, we, you know, for parents coming in, um, I, in general, I always advise parents when you have a high school age student, um, if you, as much as possible, it's difficult now COVID-19, but visit that school, talk to other person at school, uh, because that's going to be your home for the next four years. Um, our school is, uh, on the surface, it can be very intimidating to, to uh, you know, incoming ninth grader. Um, you know, they're going to take on college courses. They're going to, it's going to be highly academic. It's going to be challenging. Um, but we believe every kid can do this. Uh, every kid's at different levels. Every kid's going to move at, at a different pace. Um, we, we, what we tell parents is, uh, if you choose your child to come to Madla, they're going to come to an environment that is that is challenging academically. Uh, it's going to support your student uh, emotionally and socially. Um, but in addition to that, it's going to be a safe environment. It's a small community. It's a safe environment. It's going to be a school where they're um, told. Um, daily, either either you know um, face to face or on on Schoology or on an email or a message uh, that that their student is is built for greatness. The kids are going to be told that they're loved, that they're that they matter, uh, that their voice is important, that their voice is heard, um, and they're going to every day get that support. We do that so that when tough times come. It is in them already to understand. I can do this. I have this. Um, so, for if your students wondering, you know, can I do this? Is it going to be difficult? Uh, it will be difficult, but but your child has the opportunity to graduate high school with two years of college credit, um, with with zero with with zero money being borrowed. So, you know, it's 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 great to have students graduate their four year degree with zero or limited debt you know we all see the news the the mountain of debt that our country is under through college loans um if our students can graduate uh, with low with a low amount of, of of debt that's where the 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 economic development truly happens in the community and and families are changed completely um so by coming to us um your student will be in an environment where they they can be successful, and they'll be given the tools not to just not to just pass the star test or to get college ready. They'll be in college, and they'll know that when they leave, they can they can do whatever they want to do because they're already competing against other college students. And again, Palo Alto College is in the, is in the top one percent of community colleges in the country, and we're lucky to have them as our partner. Wow. Yeah. And then they graduate and they're set up to be like Sierra here, who graduated in 2018 <laughs> from high school with her associates and is now graduating in August with your bachelor's. So it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Mr. Flores, before we wrap up, remind us one more time, um, what's the first day of school and how can parents apply? So, so the first day of school is August 19th for the high school. Um, and our website is www.newfrontierspublicschools.org. Uh, so that's New Frontiers with an S and then public schools with an S dot org. Uh, there's an application uh, apply button on there. Uh, if the parent cannot find it, they could just call me at 210-452-1166 and I'll get them on the, on the correct website. 
um, to, to fill that application out. Perfect. And we can look across for ninth and 10th graders. Yes, so enrolling for ninth and 10th graders, you can enroll online, give Mr. Flores a call, um, you know, and that's that's all we have for today. Thank you both so much for coming on and talking with us. Um, Sierra, thank you for taking your time out of your, your busy college schedule because you're finishing up now <laughs> to chat yeah, with us. You. And Mr. Flores, thank you for talking us through what it's like for kids coming into this rigorous but very rewarding program. I loved thank, it. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>